Ale padam tam, nie? Jak się się chuchu. Jest hot out there. But you wouldn't know that because you down here in the dungeon. It's burning up down here. This, <laughs> this is like the second day or whatever day of, of winter. Mm. Man, how is this? Anyway, look, uh, I had a, you know, we were talking about uh, the young folks before. And uh, so, well, I mean, let me tell you what, when I first came to, uh, to Cape Town in 2003, doing a workshop. Anyway, there was this guy, older guy, he's like 64, which I'm going to be next week, but he was, he, he's going right now, I'm your elder. And I'm going to say, well, you might be my elder chronologically, but as far as radio goes, I've been doing radio since 1972, you know, when I was holding residence for WPRB Radio Princeton, New Jersey, so, you know, Saturday Soul Program with Jay Me, you know. And so I know, man, I've been doing radio for a long time. In fact, in the 80s, that's how I got my nom de voce, which is T from the Pattersons taking the trenches to bed. Okay. Well, it started out long. It's like T from the Pattersons living on up low east side, trying to get to Tibet. And that was from a longer poem. Anyway, that's just the But here's the thing. You know, from a master's, I've worked with some groups. Now, one of the groups is a, a, a group of, uh, they say, mentally challenged, we used to call them you know, mentally retarded, whatever it is, um, when I was growing up. Uh, but I'm calling them the challengers, you know. Then, and they're, they're younger, you know, primary school kids. Then I have another group that I'm working with, a comparative group, and they're working out at Dembaza, and they're, uh, 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 I'm calling them the entrepreneurs. Well, one of the guys, he, he you know, he, I go down there every Tuesday and Thursday, so he comes to my house, you know, oh, and then we go down together in the morning. So I've been, I've been doing the garden, but well, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I've been digging in the dirt, you know, putting some compost in there. I figured winter coming, you know, and then maybe by the spring it'll be something will happen. So he's, you know, he was there, and he, so now I had to f do the fork spade, you know, and he's going like, oh, this old guy, I don't know if he can handle this. And well, he didn't really say that, but I'm thinking that's what he's saying, you know. Anyway, you'll call you call a fork spade. We call them pitchforks, but I guess it is a fork spade. But he, it turns out, well, he started digging. It turns out he used to do gardening with his grandfather. And now I'm thinking, you know, he's he's like a, he's like an elder gardener because not only did he, he do, but he got the knowledge of his grandfather, which means, you know, that's that's what it means. So I can't. So he's he's an elder in the garden, you know. Then I got to think. Because my get to think what happened, then another extraordinary thing happened, uh, 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 and that is uh, uh, Nana. Now, you know Nana, you, mm -hmm. you know seven year old kid. Because that's an, then I got to do this individual project with the, uh, these two things, an individual project with with, with, with Nana, because he he's a uh, seven. He's, he get these English books, and I type them. Then his, I'm gonna do his his mother's got to uh, translate the sentence to proper Isi Kosa. You see, then. What happened, he says to me, we're talking, he says to me, he wants to learn Afrikaans. I go, oh, this is interesting. Now, I, uh, uh, so, you know, my, you know, my woman, she knows Afrikaans, so she'll do the sentence in Afrikaans, so we'll be doing that. Now, this is really interesting to me because in uh, like 1990, early 1990, I took this trip to Central America when I was in uh, Belize and, and, and uh, Guatemala. I live in Guatemala, right across is my favorite place on the planet, Barranco, Belize, you know, uh, right down from Punta Gorda. But in Barranco, Belize, well, not in the so I would go to the river, which is like three hours away. But at one time I was there by myself and I saw this condor in the wild. A condor is a big bird. And I'm watching this thing take off. And, and I'll, and I told you before, we used to do a lot of, you know, see a lot of films in the Bronx movie theater. And, and, and then when I was growing up, you know, just Bronx movie theater in the South Bronx. And also, you know, we had the CE area, it used to be Times Square. We had three films. But, you know, we kids, we'd be looking at films, something happening, you know, the, the girl is running through the woods. we say, no, don't stop. Oh, ah, we're yelling at the screen. And I'm watching this condor come up. And I'm going like, hey, that bird could have picked me up and take me off. You know? Mm -hmm. This was later. I'm stupidly watching this thing. 
but, but I digress. But I'm trying to say, when this, when I was in this uh, four month trip, uh, there was no internet, or no active internet, no cell phone, nothing. Like that. In fact, I purposely, uh, I purposely didn't uh, look at any newspapers. Well, this is Spanish-speaking country, but well, believe it's English, but it's a Spanish area I was in, and uh, and so I didn't have any news. The only only three pieces of news came through. One that the Sandinistas lost the election, and I was trying to get down to Nicaragua. Actually, that's what the whole trip was about. Because my radio program, Normal Radio, we were uh, partners or sisters uh, stations with a station in Bluefields, Nicaragua, which was we were doing a poetry thing once a, once a once a month, just sending it down there. So I wanted to contact with them. Uh, but anyway, that's what, uh, again I digress as usual. Uh, but the real, but the, the three things that came through was the Sandinistas lost their lesson. Um, Buster Douglas beat up on Mike Tyson, you know, mm. and Nelson Mandela was free from jail, which is really interesting because the important stuff gets through to you. Why I say this is because with this thing, with, especially with Don, I'm thinking this is important, important stuff, because in our DNA, you don't know really who is the elder, because like, you know, the, the cat, you know, uh, Lulala for the garden, he has the knowledge of his grandfather who he used to garden with. So he has that knowledge, which is, you know, through in his DNA or go through you know, whatever it is. And obviously now that talking about he wants to know this or that, he, he has some sort of language acumen, which I don't have. <laughs> anyway, so this is gonna be a very interesting few months, you know, uh, for me, because I'm I don't do this I mean I can, I don't do this elder thing even though I want to be an elder. I really I mean I I have to do it. You know, people carry stuff on me and you know, all the tata and all the rest of that stuff. Um, but I'm, I'm I'm treating this whole situation like everybody is an elder. You know, and that's that's what I feel. You know, because you never know. Because I mean, you know, I'm just an audio dramatist. You know, and and I could be right. I could be wrong on this, but I'm sure something else is going to come out of this. Anyway, this is one of those dispatches from the arts director of America. So that would be me, T, from the Patterson State in the trench to be letting you know what I always suspect.